Well, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. It has been a while, but I have something for you today to hopefully tide you over. So the repair to this rail has already been done. I've sanded that wet to 600, and then I've put a white base coat down, and then I've sanded that white base coat and all of the surrounding areas with 800. So we're now ready to do a color match and respray. So it's pretty rare that the Molotov rattle cans don't have a color that matches what I'm trying to paint, but in the very rare occasion that does happen, these are the acrylic paints that I'm using. These give me the ability to color match in small quantities. It's pretty rare I need to mix large quantities of paint, and I spray that out of this Harder and Steinbeck airbrush. Airbrushes come with a few advantages to them. One, and probably the biggest one, is minimal overspray that you would get from a larger automotive spray gun. Two would be the minimal output that they spray. So I'm gonna do this whole job with less than 30 mils would be my estimate. If I was planning to use an automotive spray gun, I couldn't mix only 30 mils. I would have to put a lot more paint on or I would have a lot left over, which isn't ideal for me and my overheads. And three, not only are they good for medium sized spray jobs like the one we're about to do, but for mimicking things like resin swirls, they can't be matched, they're so good, so definitely a worthwhile purchase. I would buy one of these over an automotive gun any day of the week if you're starting out. So we're gonna start with our closest color, which is this golden high flow teal. I'm gonna put a dollop of this on the board and see how close this color is to where we wanna get to. You want to move your board or whatever it is you're color matching into natural light, ideally direct sunlight. It's going to be a lot more reliable and true than the lights in your workshop or your shed. So our color straight out of the bottle is far too lively and white. It's really bright, really vibrant. So we need to kind of gray it up a little bit and dull it off. The paint is still wet, which is going to make a big difference, but I can tell straight off the bat, even when it's wet, that it's just not right. So our first step here is going to be mixing together some black and some white and making a gray. Once we have our gray, then we'll add our teal to it. So that's gonna give us kind of a grayish teal as you might imagine. Now a color like this isn't overly complicated. There's only really gonna be four ingredients and they're gonna be black, white, green, and blue. So once we have our teal, which is green and blue, combined with our white and our black gray, from there, we can just adjust one of the four colors that we need to until we get it right. So at our starting point here, we're far too white. We're not dark enough. It does look like we're a little too green, but we'll start by darkening it and see what the color difference is after that. So we're gonna add more teal and we're gonna add a little bit more black, like a couple of drops, just to give us somewhere to go, see where it brings this color. So our shade is pretty good here, but we're pretty gray. I don't really wanna add any more black because I think it's gonna gray out the whole color. So now we wanna work on either our green or our blues. Blue is definitely gonna darken things a little bit. So I'm only gonna put three drops of this in, give it a mix and see how it looks after that. If you have a look at where I dropped that bit of paint that's running down the rail of the board, you'll see that it's starting to dry closest to the first two drops we put. And I want you to notice the color difference between the dry paint and the wet paint. So we're getting to a stage now where we can't rely on how the wet paint looks. We need to wait until a section dries and color match that. Your wet paint is gonna look a lot brighter and more vibrant than dry paint. Things will darken as they dry. You can see it a lot clearer in this shot, the differences between the wet areas of paint and the dry areas of paint and how much that color really has changed as the sun has dried it out. Moving inside, you can see how many attempts it took to get a color that I was satisfied with. Now that we're satisfied with it, we can mask it up and get it ready to paint. It really is a case of adding very small quantities of paint to your mixture and slowly building up to where you wanna be. It's really easy to add two or three drops 
too much of something and ruining the color and not being able to bring it back. So definitely pace yourself with color matching and paint mixing. Slower is better for sure. Our first coat only goes over the white base coat that we laid down prior to our color matching and then our second coat goes over everything all the way up to our masking tape in this case or to your blends if you're spraying to an area without masking tape. This paint is incredibly thin. It needs to be in order to make its way through the tiny little holes that are in the airbrush. So you need to be careful not to lay it on too heavy because it's really easy to get runs. As well as that, you need to let it dry substantially before adding a clear coat. Here we're laying down our matte clear, as always starting with the edges or the rails and then finishing off on the big flat area so we can get that nice and wet. I'm going with a matte finish because there isn't much of a shine to this board at all. With our clear coat down, we're going to leave that 24 hours, come back the next day and we'll get on with the sanding and the finishing of this thing. Being a matte clear, I don't want to mess with it too much, so I really just gave it a quick, a really quick wet sand with some 1200, scraped away our test splotches of paint and that's it. No polish, no nothing. It's good to go and I can go back home. So I'm not particularly into stand-up paddle boards myself. But this one is a Super Sessions, as you can tell. Uh, Super Sessions was a brand from a New Zealand shaper named Graham Allen, who actually shaped in a place named Tiaro, which is only 15 minutes down the road from where I'm at. I've never met him personally, although I would certainly like to if he's out there listening to this. From the very little I know of Graham Allen's Super Sessions, he was a pretty low-key shaper. It was never big business for him, and he was always destined for greater things. He now builds super yachts here in New Zealand. He's a composite master from what I hear, doing really high-end things with carbon fibers and different composite materials like that. Although I don't know when this particular board was built, I'm assuming it was a fair while ago, considering it's one of Graham Allen's boards. His early use of epoxy is definitely something that stands out about him to me. This particular board being an epoxy layup, it's EPS foam inside and the timber on the deck is a kauri, which is a native New Zealand timber. I've never seen a stand-up paddle board by him before, I've only ever seen surfboards from him which were always beautiful boards. But even this SUP stands out to me, not just its early construction using epoxy, but its dimensions as well. It's 12 foot too long, which is crazy, but it's only 29 inches wide, which is really, really strange for a stand-up paddle board. Something that I always struggle to keep to myself is that I currently own Graham Allen's Clark Foam Edition Hitachi on the fly planer. It's a full depth cut at a quarter turn. I was so stoked to get it. A guy rocked up in my driveway one day who used to shape with Graham and he had the planer as well as a bunch of other stuff and asked if I wanted to buy it out of the boot of his car and so I did and I still use this planer today to make the boards that I make when I get a chance to make boards. So it's always an honor to work on one of his boards. I'm always stoked to get them in. And that's it. That is the end of this video, guys. I hope it's been helpful for you. Sorry for the radio silence. It has been a crazy month this month, but I'm starting to get on top of things now, and we should have another video out soon. Bit of a resto of a lightning bolt. 
Welcome to all the new subscribers that have joined us over the last month. I do normally put out more videos than this, so apologies, but you can expect more in the future. And a big thank you to the old subscribers for your patience as well. I hope you're all happy and well, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers for watching, guys. Choo-hoo!